Real faith has the power to improve people's lives in ways they couldn't have imagined before learning the truth. Take our brother Jason Worlds. He learned that what the world offers pales in comparison to what Jehovah freely gives us. News overnight, Steelers linebacker Jason Worlds is walking away from the NFL in the prime of his NFL career. Worlds is or has been with the Steelers for five seasons and started in all 16 games. He's just walking away from tens of millions of dollars. What is he going to do with the rest of his life? No clue, but it better be worth it. My name is Jason Worlds, and I'm one of Jehovah's Witnesses. My mom is a beautiful woman. It was in her early 20s that she was introduced to the witnesses and she took a study and six months later, she was baptized. And so my mom put the truth before us growing up, but I didn't see the true value of what it is that I had. I, I didn't know how true the truth was. It's vital that you set spiritual goals. If you don't, the reality is that someone is going to set a goal for you. And I think that's what, what was true in my case. I started playing American football my freshman year of high school. One of my coaches sat me down and said, you can potentially go to college on a full scholarship. I did everything to succeed at football. And so the, the dedication, um, it escalates. I studied the Bible for several years, but by the time that I started to make progress in my study, I was being courted by the NFL. I was whole sold <laughs> um, to, to football. And so I pursued my professional career. When I was drafted, it was what I had been working towards for so many years. That first year, it was chaotic, but then my second year, I got to a point in my life where everything was unstable. I, I felt that the things that I was pursuing were fruitless. I just felt, I felt hollow inside, right? I felt like if you shook me, I would rattle. <laughs> and I saw those who had more money, more success, and they weren't happy. That was one of the motivating factors for me to say, you know what? There has to be something more. There has to be, because I'm at the precipice of what I've always wanted. And only thing that I can see it's more angst, more headache, more strife. This is how pervasive the Jehovah's Witness indoctrination can be. Thank you, Jason Worlds, for demonstrating that any amount of exposure to Jehovah's Witness propaganda as a young person can take root and lead to you making terrible decisions in the future. And I say terrible decisions, I'm sure he will feel perfectly content with the decisions he's made. He will, he, in fact, he is saying that he's happier and more content now. Of course, he's going to say that, but what has he really gained? He's not really gained anything. He's given up control over his life. He has allowed an organization to decide for him what career he can have and what decisions he should make even in such intimate areas as who he chooses to have as a partner, what he does in his sex life, what his entertainment should be, what his dress and grooming should be. That's the upgrade he has supposedly attained that we should all be gushing about. I'm sorry, I'm not buying it. I feel sorry for the guy. And I can't help but wonder whether it might have been some kind of mental health crisis that tipped the balance. That first year, it was chaotic, but then my second year, I got to a point in my life where everything was unstable. I, I felt that the things that I was pursuing were fruitless. I, I just felt, I felt hollow inside, right? I felt like if you shook me, I would rattle. <laughs> he felt hollow. He felt like everything in his life was unstable. And it was coming from that mindset that he decided to pick up where he'd left off with pursuing the religious organization into which he'd been indoctrinated by his mother. That was the starting point for him jettisoning his career 
as an NFL athlete. Oh, I'm feeling hollow. I'm feeling like everything is in turmoil. I need there to be more to life than having a career or enjoying life <laughs> or just finding your own purpose. I guess the meaning of life must be in this religion I was raised in. There was nothing there that was going to bring lasting happiness. And I think that is what motivated me to want to see what's in this Bible. And so I reached out and I picked up a study with a local brother there in Pittsburgh. For a time, I felt like, man, I can do, I can do both of these. <laughs> I got my craft here and I'm enjoying it. And then I have Jehovah. As a defender in football, there are certain things that you, you dream of. One game, I had one of those opportunities, but I didn't put everything into it the way that I always dreamed of myself doing. I let up. The person that I was on the inside was changing. That night, I sat thinking, and you're not in an environment that's conducive to you continuing to grow as a spiritual person. You might need to make some changes. And that night is when I realized that, hey, you know what? Yeah, I don't, I don't need this. Why are you here? What are you doing? The reality is that I loved playing football. I enjoyed it, but it didn't bring true happiness. I retired at a time where I was going to take the next step with my career. And so the, the offers that were on the table were tens of millions of dollars, and that wasn't what I wanted to do. And so once I let them know that, then the offers increased. But that wasn't what I wanted. I wanted to make the truth my own and get into the full-time ministry. I was baptized September 13th, 2015. That day was so special because Jehovah completely welcomed me into his spiritual family. I've become a better friend. I've become a better brother. I've become a better son. <laughs> There's nothing but wins when you serve Jehovah. The joy, the happiness that I receive now and why I just rejoice to be out in the ministry is because you have an opportunity to actually affect change in someone's life and make them a better person and give them purpose and have them have this same warm relationship with Jehovah that you have. It's unparalleled. That's the fact. <laughs> the more that we center our lives around Jehovah, the happy we'll be. That's where my happiness comes from. As Brother World said, the more we center our life on Jehovah, the happier we will be. Yes, it's all about happiness, isn't it? Isn't that interesting? It's not about Jehovah's sovereignty. It's not about obedience. It's not about knowing your place and spreading the kingdom message per se. It's about doing what makes you happy <laughs> when it suits the organization for it to be about pleasure and happiness. It's about pleasure and happiness. Oh, I wish they'd get their message in order. But yes, this was Jason World sharing his story. And again, I just can't help but feel like something is off. I can't help but wonder what story we would hear if this gentleman were to ever wake up from his cult indoctrination. Who knows, maybe I'll get to interview him on the channel someday. But this very much sounds like someone who had reached burnout point, someone who felt as though the walls were closing in, who was going through some kind of crisis and started just thrashing about looking for meaning in life where there was none. Again, you're always going to think differently if you are of a religious persuasion. I happen to be atheist and I happen to think that you get whatever meaning you want from life. If there's something that you feel passionately about, you should pursue it. And quite frankly, just enjoying life, 
in and of itself is a reason to live. It's better to do that than to be just doing stuff that makes you miserable to the point where you're so depressed that you end up ending it all. And what's interesting is here we have an organization that brags about having the happiest people, thumbnail here to a recent sushi if Tibor is gracious. And yet even in the organization's own video propaganda, you'll get stories of where Jehovah's Witnesses, despite their beliefs and despite their involvement in the preaching work, reached breaking point, reached a stage of utter despair, anxiety, depression. And anyone who spent any time as a Jehovah's Witness, like on the ground in the congregations, will be able to think of examples of people who were attending all of the meetings out in the preaching work and they were still on antidepressants they were still struggling with their mental health so with all the best will in the world for jason worlds i think he is misrepresenting and misselling the jehovah's witness organization to an entire generation of young people who will perhaps view him as a role model he is portraying the Jehovah's Witness ideology as some panacea that's just going to inject you with instant happiness. When anyone who's actually spent time as one of Jehovah's Witnesses and been exposed to the abusive, toxic nature of the organization will give you a very different story.